Rachel called the police early in the morning. When they arrived, she told the officers her story. I work in a museum. Yesterday, I took home several ancient books. I wanted to do some research, but then a blackout happened. I lit a couple of candles and continued my work. Suddenly, I heard the doorbell ring. When I opened the door, someone in a black mask hit me on the head. When I recovered, the books were gone. Detective Anderson arrested the woman for misreporting. Why? If there had been a blackout, the doorbell wouldn't have been working. After a bank had been robbed, the police found a bag with money in the park. It was lying among cacti. The police officers arrested three suspects. It didn't take long to figure out who the bank robber was. Do you know who it is? It's the man on the left. He's the only one with some scratches. They must have been left by the cacti. Detective Brown stopped a man leaving a clothing store. The sales assistant claims you've stolen some expensive gloves. These are my gloves. I've had them for ages, the man exclaimed. But the detective immediately understood the man was lying. How? The man wouldn't be able to use these gloves. They're both for the same hand. A family with two teenagers went on vacation to the seaside. They lived in a small bungalow, almost right on the beach. Everything was great at first, but two days after their arrival, oh no! their younger son went missing. The police had four suspects. They invited the guy's family to look at them. Maybe they could recognize someone. The teenager's mother didn't need more than a glance before she knew who was behind her son's disappearance. Who was it? It's the man wearing the missing guy's baseball cap. Michael was going home from the gym when everything went black. When the guy came around, he found out that he was in a locked room. Next to the door, there was a computer with a keyboard. On the screen, there was a riddle. Michael had to type the correct answer and the door would open. The riddle went like this. It makes two people out of one. What is it? Michael typed the correct word and the door opened. He was free to go. What was the answer? It's a mirror. Police detective Thomas Davis was walking along the street on a winter evening. Suddenly, he saw a person in a black mask sneaking out of a house through the window. They were carrying two large bags. The detective realized it was a burglar. He ran after the stranger, but they turned the corner and disappeared. Thomas understood that the criminal had hidden in one of these houses, but which one? It can't be the house on the left, there are too many people inside. There are no footprints in the snow leading to the house on the right. It means no one has been there for quite some time which leaves us with the house in the middle. Oliver was attacked in his apartment and taken to a hospital. The police had four suspects, all of them Oliver's neighbors. Amelia said she'd been walking in the park since early morning. Henry explained he'd been painting in his studio and had heard nothing. Jacob said he'd been repairing his car. Sophia answered she'd been taking a bath for the past three hours. Look at these people's hands and try to figure out who is lying. It's a bit strange that Jacob, who'd been repairing his car, and Henry, who'd been painting, both have such clean hands. But they could have been wearing gloves. At the same time, Sophia's hands and fingers aren't wrinkled but it would be a natural skin reaction after three hours in a bathtub. How many bricks does it take to complete a building?
just one. It will be the last one. A man wanted to buy a used car. He found a nice one, which cost $9,000. He bought it and didn't pay a dime for it. How come? When paying $9,000, you don't need to spend dimes. Now let's check your math skills. How can you write 45 using only the number 4? Forty-four plus forty-four forty-fourths. Nathan sneaked out of the house late in the evening to meet his girlfriend. The teenager thought he was extremely careful and quiet, but his whole family knew about his plan. They were aware that the guy would return at midnight. They decided to make a bet. The one who would see Nathan first when the guy started climbing the fence would be the winner. No chores for them for one week. Not to fall asleep, Nathan's dad switched on the TV. The teen's grandfather settled in the living room and started to read a book. The grandmother went to the kitchen to make pizza, and Nathan's mom went to her room, sat down on the floor, and started meditating. Who's going to be the first to spot Nathan when the time comes? Nathan's mom. Her eyes will be used to the darkness, and she will see better than the others. The CEO of a large company called the police. He was sure that one of his employees, Victoria, had stolen a memory card with secret information. She was going to sell it to the competitors. The police arrived at Victoria's house, but the woman didn't let them in without a warrant. The officers had to leave to get all the necessary papers. When they came back, Victoria was already sitting in her car, ready to drive off. The police officers arrested the woman. They searched her car and clothes, but found nothing. And then, when they were about to give up, one of the detectives realized where Victoria kept the memory card. Can you figure it out? When the police first came to her, the woman had her hair down. But after that, Victoria changed her hairstyle. The memory card is in her bun. Martin was driving past a bus stop when he saw three people standing there. One of them was Monica, a woman he had a crush on. Martin also spotted Sam, his friend, and an elderly lady who looked like she was freezing. Unfortunately, Martin had a two-seater car. What should he do? He should let Sam borrow his car and stay at the bus stop with the girl he likes. This way, Sam will be able to give a lift to the elderly woman, and Martin will have more time to get to know Monica better. During a fire, a bank was robbed. The security guard told the police he wanted to save a bag with money, but he had to lace up his boot right in front of the emergency kit. At that moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he recovered, the money was missing. Why was the security guard arrested? All emergency doors open outward. Detective Adams came to the park to have lunch in the sun, but his attention was drawn by three men running around a fountain. Each of them was shouting, Thief! Catch the thief! The detective was confused. Who was the real thief? That's why he just kept watching. After some time, the distance between the men shortened. Detective Adams immediately realized who the real thief was. Can you figure it out too? If the third man was the thief, the second one would only have to turn around to catch him. The same goes for the second man, which means the man running in first is the criminal. Someone robbed a bank in a large city. A police detective went to visit the main suspect. I've been feeling unwell all this week, and I haven't left my apartment for three days. I didn't even need food. My fridge is full. You can make sure yourself, the suspect said, and indeed opened his fridge. But the detective realized the man was lying and arrested him. How did he figure it out?
First of all, the bread on the table looks fresh. Plus, if the man had been staying inside for three days already, his fridge wouldn't be that full. Allison has two coins which total 35 cents. If one of the coins isn't a dime, what are the two coins Allison has? Well, one is not a dime, but the other one is a dime, so Allison has a quarter and a dime. Let's start with a couple of simple teasers to warm up your brain for today's challenge. The day before yesterday was the 17th. What is the day after tomorrow? If the day before yesterday was the 17th, it means that today is the 19th. So the day after tomorrow is the 21st. Wendy's birthday was yesterday. She turned 16 years old. Yet, she's turning 17 this year. How is it possible? Wendy's birthday must be December 31st, and today must be January 1st, already the new year. A family is on vacation, carelessly chilling at the beach all day long. They were drinking their iced cocktails when suddenly, the youngest daughter, Odette, asked, What day of the week is today? No one knew. The father said, I only know what tomorrow is, neither Thursday nor Friday. The mother said, And I'm sure that yesterday wasn't Saturday or Sunday. And Adele, an older sister, said, Today is definitely not Friday, not a Monday, and not a Tuesday. What day is today? Let's cross out all the impossible days. From Dad, we know that it's not Wednesday and not a Thursday. From Mom, we know that Sunday and Monday are also out. Adele said no to Tuesday and Friday, so it's a Saturday. Avery walked into a room and there were several doors there. On the first door, there was a sign saying, Lion's Den. On the second door, there was a sign saying, Mountain Top. On the third door, there was a sign with just a question mark. Still, Avery knew exactly where the third door was leading. Do you? The third door is the door Avery walked through, so it led back there. Once upon a time, there was a happy family living in a house in the shape of a dome. There was a mother, a father, their daughter, a chef, a maid, and a puppy named Oliver. One day, mother and father came back home and found out that Oliver had gone missing. Oh, no. They asked who was the last one to walk him, but everyone denied it. The daughter said, I was reading. The maid said, I was dusting the corners in the house. The chef said, I was a baking an apple pie. Who is responsible for Oliver's disappearance? The maid. There's no corners in a dome-shaped house. Mrs. Lawrence has three daughters, Ava, Bethany, and Chloe. She's about to have another girl. What do you think she'll name her? Riley, Daphne, or Ava? Mrs. Lawrence seems to follow the alphabet, so I bet she'll name her fourth daughter Daphne. In the middle of a pond, there's a little island, and there's a butterfly sitting on a rock. If it swims north, it's two minutes to the mainland. If it swims east, it's three minutes to the mainland. If it swims south, it's one minute to the mainland. If it swims west, it's five minutes to the mainland. Which way should it swim? It shouldn't swim either way. Butterflies fly.
Once upon a time, an evil witch kidnapped three women and turned them into rose bushes. One of the women begged the witch to see her husband before she left him forever. The witch agreed. She took the woman home for the night and returned her to her rose bush state the next morning. The woman had warned her husband, and the husband was following them to rescue his wife. Look at these three identical rose bushes. Which one is his wife? The rose bush that was his wife doesn't have any of the night's dew on the leaves. A married couple went on vacation. They locked up their house and gave the keys to a neighbor, along with instructions on what to control and maintain in the house. Just in case, the wife hid her jewelry in a safe place. While they were on vacation, there was a power outage in the house. There was no electricity for a couple of days, until the neighbor uh -oh. came back to check the house. The neighbor cleaned everything up by the time the couple got back. The wife couldn't find her jewelry. The neighbor swore that he didn't touch it. Where did the jewelry go? The wife hid them in a freezer. After the power outage, everything melted and the neighbor threw out all the food and jewelry as well by mistake. Now, a tricky question for you. What is the difference between electricity and lighting? You have to pay for electricity. Anna is bilingual. She speaks English and German. She had four exams to write, English, Math, History, and Geography. She wasn't prepared for them well, so she wrote all of them in German. All teachers returned her tests because they couldn't understand anything and suggested she write the test on a different day, in English. Still, one teacher could understand what she had written and gave her an F. Which teacher was it? It's the math teacher. Mathematics is all numbers, and they're the same in most languages. So the teacher could understand everything and check the exam. It's an early Monday morning. William and Daniel are both driving to work. Who is not being smart? Daniel, he hasn't fastened his seatbelt. It's not safe. James and Delaney are getting ready for a big family barbecue in the evening. James is cooking and Delaney is busy with all the decorations. Who is not smart? James, he's cooking in the direct sun and there's milk standing right there. It'll go bad very fast. Riley and Tessa are doing house chores. Riley is vacuum cleaning the house and Tessa is outside shoveling the snow. Which one of them is in danger? Tessa, look, she's standing right below big icicles hanging off the roof. Every day, a woman was seen crossing the border carrying bags of sand on a motorbike. After some time, the border police got suspicious and stopped her. But they found she had only sand in those bags, uh -oh. so they let her go. What was the woman smuggling across the border? The answer is right in front of their nose. She's been smuggling motorbikes. Jonas lives on a farm. He just bought seven horses. He's riding one of the horses, leading the rest to his farm. On the way, he's counting the horses he has, but he can only see six. Problem, he paid for seven. He takes off, walks away, and counts the horses again. Seven, everything is correct. He hops up on a horse and keeps riding home. Midway, he's counting the horses again. Six, what do you think is his problem?
Jonas always forgets to count the horse he's sitting on. Grace and Hope are twins, and they like to mess with people. Grace lies on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Hope lies on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. One day, you walk up to them and ask what day it is. Both of them say, Yesterday was one of my lying days. Which day is it? It can't be a Sunday, because they both say the truth one Sunday, and someone is obviously lying now. So one of them is lying, and one of them is telling the truth. So it's either the first day Grace lies, or the first day Hope lies. So it's either Monday or Thursday. It can't be Monday, because in this case, both would lie saying yesterday was a lying day. So it's Thursday. Grace is telling the truth, and Hope is lying. Ben has an equal number of sisters and brothers, but each sister has twice more brothers as sisters. How many brothers and sisters are there in the family? There are four brothers and three sisters. So every boy has three brothers and three sisters. Every girl has four brothers and two sisters. Detective Callum was walking past a little house in the suburbs and heard a woman screaming, No, Ben, don't! He ran inside and saw an empty bottle of rat poison and several people inside. An elderly lady, a young man, a blonde girl, a brunette girl, and a cat. He figured out that one of them had drunk the poison without asking any questions. He picked up the man and drove him to the hospital. How did the detective know who drank the poison? He heard the name. It was Ben, and there was just one man in the house. Emma is a secret agent, and she's after a guy who's been possibly smuggling contraband from abroad. Tonight, she managed to find his secret office and broke into it. There were four safes. She used her equipment to open three of them, but they were empty. When she tried to get the code for the last safe, her device stopped working, so Emma could only rely on herself. If the codes for the three safes were 5378, 3785, and 7853, what is the code for the fourth one? You might have noticed that every next code is formed by moving the first digit of the previous code to the last position. So the fourth code must be 8537. Emily was on vacation and she was staying in a hotel. One evening, she was getting ready to go out when she heard a knock on her door. She opened the door and there was a stranger there. Oh, sorry, I must have made a mistake. I live nearby. Sorry for disturbing you. The guy left, but Emily didn't believe that it was a mistake, so she reported him. Why was she so suspicious? The guy knocked on the door. If he had really thought it was his room, he'd have tried to open it with his key. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. Soon, she found a witch's house, walked in, petted a cat, and asked the witch to take her home. But the witch had a different proposal. Give me a statement. If the statement is true, you'll stay here forever. If the statement is false, you'll stay here for a hundred years. Otherwise, I'll take you home. What did Esme say? Esme said, I'll stay here for a hundred years. Now, if it's true, she should stay forever instead, but then the statement will be false. 
If the statement is false, she will have to stay for a hundred years, so it becomes true. The witch is too confused, so this time Esme is going home. Detective Callum was following a robber around the city. Suddenly, the robber entered a hospital and disappeared. When the detective entered the building, there were three workers. One of them must be the criminal dressed up to pretend to be a doctor. Can you tell who it is? It's the guy on the left. All other doctors wear hospital shoes, and he's the only one wearing regular sneakers. On a summer day, the police warned that a robber had escaped from Spain and taken a plane to Los Angeles. They got the description of the robber. Six feet tall, skinny, dark hair, no beard. Detective Callum arrived at the airport to arrest the guy. Take a look. Which guy is the one they need? It may seem that there's no one who fits the description, but look, this blonde guy here. Some dark hair is peeking from under his blonde wig. It must be the criminal in disguise. Detective Callum went on a vacation to a distant island somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. The problem is that he doesn't speak or understand a word in the local language. But right now, he needs to figure out which restroom to use. Since one is for men and the other is for women, he has found one local lady who doesn't speak English but can understand it. How can Detective Callum figure out which is the men's restroom? It's possible to do this by asking just two questions. At first, he should point at himself and ask, Am I a man? And remember the response. Whatever the local woman replies, it means a yes. Then, Detective Callum can ask the second question. Is this a men's restroom? Pointing at one of them. If the response is the same word as before, it's a yes. If it's different, then it's a no. By the way, what is it that can answer back in any language? It's an echo. Elu is a fairy who needs to fly to a village on the other side of the forest for some fairy business. The problem is that the trip there takes six days. But one fairy can only carry four packs of pixie dust, and one is only enough for one day. There's no chance of getting more pixie dust midway. It's all stored in the villages. So, Elu should take some helpers on the trip with her. How many helpers does she need? And what should be her strategy to reach the other village? Elu will need two helpers. Let's call them B and C. Each of them will have a four-day supply of pixie dust. So the three of them will have 12 packs. During the first day, they will all be using the pixie dust B is carrying. So they'll use three out of four packs. At the end of the day, B will fly back to the village. And Elu and C will keep going. The remaining pack of pixie dust will be enough for B to make it back home safely. On the second day, Elu and C will be using the pixie dust C is carrying. So they'll use two by the end of the day. Then C will go home. The road back home will take her two days, and the two packs will be enough for her to return. Elu will continue her journey alone. It'll be just four more days but she'll still have her four packs of pixie dust to make it there. L is a college student. She goes there by train, but she always rides her bike to the train station. Her house is between two stations. 
one mile from the first station and two miles from the second station. Every morning, she rides her bike to the first station. But every afternoon, when she returns from college, she gets off at the second station. Why? L lives on a hill. The first station is at the lowest point. The second one is at the highest point, and her house is in the middle. She takes advantage of this location to make sure she always goes down the hill to get wherever she needs. In a summer camp, everyone had to tell a fun fact about themselves, and other people had to guess if it was true or false. Camilla said, My birthday is on February 29th. So I have four times fewer birthdays than everyone else. This year, I celebrated my birthday. I turned 17. Why didn't people believe her? February 29th only happens once every four years. Camilla couldn't celebrate her 17th birthday on her actual birthday because this number can't be divided by four. So either she wasn't born that day, or she's not 17. Time to check your attention and logical thinking skills. Do you have an eye for detail? Then you'll make a great detective. One day, you go to a restaurant to get something to eat. But as soon as you enter, you hear loud, angry voices. A waitress and a visitor are arguing. You also order chicken wings and you have to pay for this dish. It's the waitress. The visitor looks tired and sleepy. But I didn't. I haven't been here longer than an hour. Yeah, I did doze off, but it doesn't mean I don't remember my order. You step in. You know very well that this man couldn't have ordered chicken wings, you say. How did you figure it out? You noticed on the wall it says the kitchen works till 1 p.m. It's 3 p.m. now. The man claims he's been here for an hour. It means he came after the kitchen had been closed and couldn't have ordered anything to eat. Nathan came to visit his friend Zachary, who worked in a museum. Look what I've got! A priceless manuscript that was written more than a thousand years ago. Zachary looked through the manuscript and realized his friend had been fooled. Does anything in this text strike you as strange? If we talked about the dates before the Common Era, they should be in reverse order. The original text would read, King Alfred V ruled the country from 1320 to 1290 BCE. A man called the police late at night. He said, I've heard a very loud noise coming from the house next door. I'm afraid to go there alone. But what if something bad has happened? When the police arrived, they saw that the entrance door was open. They ran inside and found the house owner, Mr. Anderson, on the floor of his bedroom. He was tied and moaning in pain. He said he had been in bed reading a book. And then a man in a black mask broke into his room and hit him on the head. Then. He tied Mr. Anderson, took all his money and other valuables, and disappeared. The police officers didn't believe the man. Why? Look at his bed. There isn't even a wrinkle on the covers. It's unlikely that the thief made the bed after tying Mr. Anderson. It can only mean the man is lying. Evelyn wants to visit one unusual restaurant, but to get there, one must know the password. The girl hides around the corner to figure it out. She sees a man come up to the security guard. The guard says, 12. The man answers, 6, and is allowed to come in. Then a young woman approaches the security guard. He says, 6, and she answers, 3. Evelyn is sure she's figured out the pattern. She comes up to the security guard. He says, four. The girl answers, two, and isn't allowed to enter. Can you figure out why?
The password is always different. It's the number of letters in the word the security guard says. The word four has four letters. That's what Evelyn should have answered. A manager of the most luxurious sea resort in the area called the police. She said someone had stolen a set of very expensive monogrammed bed linen. Three guests left the hotel that morning. Mr. Sam Taylor, Mrs. Amanda Martin, and Mr. Michael Smith. The police detained one of the guests and, indeed, found the bed linen in their suitcase. How did the detectives figure out who the thief was? As you can see, the hotel's name is The Morning Star. This means the monogram on the bed linen is MS. The only person with the same initials is Mr. Michael Smith, so he can use the bed linen pretending to have ordered it with his monogram to show off. Two cars are driving through the city. They both started their journey at the same time. The green car is moving at a speed of 30 miles per hour. The yellow car is faster. Its speed is 50 miles per hour. And still, at one point, the green car comes across the yellow car. How is it possible? The cars are traveling in opposite directions. Aaron is a detective who has to work undercover at a luxurious yeah. resort. The police suspect that the hotel owners are involved in some shady deals. Aaron's task is to sneak into the manager's office and check his documents. But the door is locked, uh -oh. and there's a combination lock. Aaron has to figure out the password. The detective knows he needs to solve a math riddle, and the answer will be the code. As soon as he punches in the code, the door opens. What is the correct number? It's 30. There are no mathematical symbols at the end of the first and second lines. It means the whole thing looks like this. A very famous painting disappeared from a museum. Later, the police managed to find it, but there was a problem. They found not one, but three paintings. Only one of them is original. The others are just copies. Can you help the police figure out which is the original painting? It's the one with the brown frame. Take a look. All frames in the museum are made in the same style. Now, you've got accepted to the best school of witchcraft and wizardry. One of the best classes you have to attend is about transforming into animals. There are three professors who teach this class. Each of them specializes in transforming into a certain animal. Look at your professors and try to figure out uh -oh. what kind of animal each of them turns into. Have you noticed that the first professor has a forked tongue? He must transform into a snake. The second professor has a lion's tail. It must be the animal she transforms into. And the third professor has bear claws. He must turn into a grizzly bear. Maria was a princess and the heir to the throne. One day, an evil witch lured the girl into a magic forest. Maria got lost. Luckily, she had an enchanted pendant given to her by one of the king's magicians. It will help you find your way back home if you ever get lost, he said. Maria tapped the pendant, and three spirits appeared in front of her. The first spirit was an owl, the second was a butterfly, and the third spirit was a hawk. Unfortunately, only one of them knew the way back to the castle. And if Maria chose to follow the wrong spirit, she would find herself even further away from home. Can you help the princess pick the correct spirit animal? Have you noticed the banners in the throne room? There was a butterfly on each of them. It means the butterfly is the official symbol of the kingdom. Maria should follow the butterfly spirit. A man lives in a high-rise apartment building. 
He has an unusual habit related to the evening elevator ride after he returns home from work. If it's been raining, he always takes the elevator straight to his 17th floor. If it's sunny, but there's someone else in the elevator with him, he always gets straight to the 17th floor. But if it hasn't been raining and he's alone in the elevator, he takes the elevator to the 11th floor and walks up the stairs the rest of the way. Can you figure out why? The man is very short. He can only reach the button for the 11th floor. If someone else is in the elevator, he asks them to press the button for his floor. And when it's rainy, he uses his umbrella to press the button. Johnny, a party clown, is carrying three pieces of gold. Each of these pieces weighs two pounds. While walking, the guy comes to a bridge. It has a sign saying the bridge can only hold a maximum of 180 pounds. Johnny weighs 176 pounds. Johnny reads the sign and still safely crosses the bridge with all the gold. How is it possible? Johnny is a clown, so he knows how to juggle. While walking across the bridge, he juggled the gold, keeping one piece in the air. Alfred wants to be a supermodel, so he visits a fancy audition in New York, hoping for the best. There's a line of his rivals standing in the lobby. One of them is not from this planet. Can you guess who? This guy with the snake eyes. Daisy, the photographer, invites Alfred to her studio to take some shots. After a couple of days, she receives printed pictures and freaks out. Why? Take a look at Alfred's body in this picture. Both of his feet are right. Amazingly, Alfred gets his dream job. A famous magazine invited him to shoot their cover. He arrives at the studio early to get ready. Before the start of the photo shoot, Alfred looks in the mirror. Gross! There's an allergic rash all over his face. Alfred interrogates three suspects. The assistant says, I was told you're allergic to peanuts and berries, so we've prepared only safe snacks. The makeup artist says, I didn't touch your food. I put on your makeup and left for a coffee break. And the cleaning lady says, I know how sensitive models are. That's why I only use organic, hypoallergenic cleaning products. Can you guess who's guilty of Alfred's allergy? The makeup artist. Even though she didn't have access to his food, she was the only one who had access to his face, and she could put toxins in his makeup. Alfred gets hired as a model for a clothing catalog. He's asked to put on these trendy jeans. Can you count the exact number of holes in this piece of clothing? These two holes go through the pant legs, so in fact, these are four holes, not two. As for this hole, it's only on the front of the leg, plus one hole. But that's not all. These jeans also have three more holes, two on the bottom of the pant legs and one on the belt. So the correct answer is eight. Alfred stayed late in the studio to write a post, and now he's finally going home. He walks along the dark hall of the office building. Suddenly, Alfred hears someone screaming for help. The voice comes from the broom locker. He opens the door. Daisy, who closed you here? Daisy replies, I have no idea. I went to the eighth floor to eat in a Chinese restaurant, but it was closed for maintenance all day. So I decided to go home. Then someone put a garbage bag on my head and locked me in here. In the morning, Alfred interrogates five suspects. The cleaner says, I was washing the windows on the eighth floor. The makeup artist says, I was cleaning my brushes in the bathroom. The assistant says, 
I was helping the makeup artist, but I went home earlier. The stylist says, I had dinner in the local Chinese restaurant and then went to a concert. And the cameraman says, I was sick yesterday, so I went home early. Who locked up Daisy? The stylist. The Chinese restaurant was closed yesterday. The six friends get trapped inside the cave. Unfortunately, they had left all the food in the camp. That's why they're starving while waiting for the rescue group to arrive. Suddenly, Alfred finds five cookies in his pocket. Can you find the easiest way to divide these five cookies among six people equally? They should split the first three cookies in half and divide the remaining two cookies into three parts. This way, each person will get one half and one third of a cookie. Alfred returns from his vacation and checks his email. He sees three new job offers. Francis invites Alfred to participate in New York Fashion Week. Julia offers good money for a shampoo commercial. And Crystal offers him to be the face of a famous clothing brand. One of these employers is a scammer. Can you guess who? Crystal, the spelling of the brand Gucci, is wrong. Alfred arrives at the shampoo commercial filming spot. He enters the dressing room and sees his actress partner, Amber. She has a short, messy haircut. Amber yells, I took a 30-minute nap and someone has cut my beautiful long hair. Alfred asks three suspects one question. What were you doing the last 30 minutes? The makeup artist says, I was streaming a backstage video for my followers. The guard replies, My coffee break started 30 minutes ago, so I went to the vending machine and bought hot chocolate. But then I received an assignment to catch a stranger with scissors. I kicked him out and returned to my workplace. And the stylist says, Oh, I spent the last 20 minutes in the toilet. I shouldn't have eaten seafood for breakfast. Can you help Alfred spot the liar? It's the guard. He bought the hot chocolate 30 minutes ago, but why is it still hot? Alfred arrives at the fashion week. He's staying in a hotel with a roommate, Billy. Alfred takes a brief look at Billy's suitcase and spots three weird details right away. Can you see them too? Why does he need the shaving cream if he uses an electric razor? The book title is printed upside down, and there's no pair to this sock. Alfred goes to a fancy party full of celebrities. Four guys want to impress him. They learn that Alfred was born in Australia, so they come up to him, tell their stories, and show some pictures. Jake says, I'm so excited to go on a road trip around Australia this summer. Peter says, I'm a travel blogger. Last summer in Arizona, I got some great kangaroo shots. Will says, I'm a super broke guy. I've only been to New Jersey so far. And Oliver says, I donate money for charity projects in Australia. Once, I saved a little koala. Who's lying? Peter. Kangaroos only live in Australia. Alfred leaves the party. But suddenly, he finds out that he had left his phone in the club. He returns and questions three people standing nearby. The waiter says, I was busy with my orders. I didn't see anything. The cleaner says, I think I saw your phone on the sofa. But when I looked there again, it was already gone. And the manager says, There are no phones in our lost and found office. Who took Alfred's phone?
the waiter. She has Alfred's phone case hidden in her boot. The next morning, Alfred enters the gym. He takes a look around and freaks out. Why? This lady is not from this planet. She has a completely transparent belly. Alfred is now wealthy enough to afford a new apartment. He locks all his documents and money in a safe that he found inside his bedroom, but now he can't open it. Alfred finds a list of codes nearby, but he doesn't know which one is correct. Can you help him figure out the code? These buttons are used a lot, but only the third combination includes all these numbers. Alfred goes to his granny and spends holidays in the country. There, he meets his school friend, Dan. They haven't been talking for years. Dan begins to boast, I've become a famous blogger. My videos on YouTube get millions of views. Dan shows Alfred a video from his channel, but Alfred looks at the video and immediately realizes that Dan is lying. How? The gap between likes and views is too huge. It's impossible. Dan just took a screenshot and changed the numbers in Photoshop. 